Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for being interested in this presentation. It uh, sounds like a little bit negative. Uh, why project failures? Why do we talk about it? Because if you see project failures, you have a chance of making your own project a success, position it for a success. Interestingly, as big data is uh, the current trend, the hype, the new belief, everybody believes that if they go big data, they will have the future. Uh, it is also true that big data is, is even harder than IT ever before. And IT has always been a risky business. Uh, so the project risks are even increasing. And um, I am personally not a technologist. Uh, I am not working with the big data technologies, not myself. But I am observing projects and uh, projects that are trying to achieve best of technology and I'm trying to see the patterns, what, is, what can go wrong. So if I am talking about project failures, it is about how to do it better, how to avoid those mistakes that are relatively easy in a way of recognizing it. It's not easy to do them well. That's why project failures are typical, because they are typically fail on something that is not easy to do. And uh, there is one more thing. Uh, I am mostly working with uh, traditional large enterprises and industries that have long history and companies that have IT and business organizations for a long time. So their home ground, their background is the traditional IT. And in that arena is always the context that the project failures seems to be more related to the organization than actually the tech to the technology. So project failures uh, around seeing big data as a cheap storage. Interestingly enough, one of the main drivers of, of this disruption is because the, the storage prices are really lower than in the traditional technologies. However, there is also a relationship, a very soft one, not very uh, explicit, but those projects where the main driver or the only driver for promising business benefit for the enterprise is that the storage will be cheaper, are actually positioned for failure or more positioned for failure than for success. And how do I see them? Uh, it's not easy to hear about them because it's the new hype. If the project fails, first of all, there is always a chance to continue the project and correct the mistakes. There is always a chance for additional investment or another use case. So people don't talk about them as failures. But in, in project methodology, there is always a scope, there is always a budget, there is always a time. And if the project doesn't happen or doesn't satisfy business requirements, then it is a failure in some way. And big data in that sense is even harder than before because there are less guarantees for meeting the business expectations as before. However, the large enterprises, their investment decisions, their procurement processes, they remained in the traditional investment logic, business case, net present value, time, scope, budget, go. And that's where I, I have seen failures, and that's what I want to show. What are the patterns of the failures that I see? And I want to show it in a way that I can say that, yes, there is a way to do it better. OK, so. Uh, Data-driven business, the, the chain is painfully long. Not because technologies are not there, but the chain is long because to make the change happen, you have to make the change happen if, if in every single step of the chain. And for that is long the chain. In a traditional textbook context, where you read how to do 
an IT project that is positioned for success, first of all, you have to see that there are drivers in the business and drivers in IT. And ideally, the drive for the entire project, the commitment to do something better, comes from the business. And uh, the business has a thing already known, maybe not very specifically, I know what to do because the business will be better than before. There will be more profit, uh, I will improve the revenues, I will get more customers, I will shorten the time to market, whichever, whatever. But there is a strong business presence. On the picture, I have used some color code. Uh, the color code of the, 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 the purple around the arrow is that the purple means the business side, and the, the color code is that business is driving. Business has a hypothesis that I know how to do my business better. And it goes to the technology side, and uh, the technology is cooperating. Yes, I understand what you say, and I know that there can be a solution for that. Okay, after that, IT takes the problem, thinks about a solution. In the data-driven world, they have to think a little more than ever before in the transactional IT systems, but it is all possible. There are good people, experts working on it, committed to the problem. They can say what to do, how to do, how much does it take, time and money. And after that, they come together to a business insight, let's say ideally, a business assumption has been confirmed positively, uh, and so they found that, yes, the hypothesis was right, we can do our business better, so there is a business case. And after that, it's an easy ride. Business takes the action, takes all the solution results, put them into the processes, and then makes the business benefit, and then measure back, and we are good. Easy. Now, in big data projects, what I see is, and really it is large enterprise specific, that first of all, the hypothesis doesn't come from business. It is IT people who have an idea that, yeah, I have seen that, and, and this, we, we might use that for business, and am I right that if we do this, then the benefits will be on business, right? So if IT has been pushing for a hypothesis, maybe there are some business people who say that, yeah, just tell me what is the specification. I can imagine that you are right, there is business value in it, but please tell me what is the business specification. And IT tells, we are smart guys, why don't we tell? So we plan the, the requirements and then make a solution for that. And then we come to a, to a business insight, and IT is convincing the business that, you see, I was right, this is good, so why don't you go for it? Then comes the next step, that somebody has to make a business case, because the investment decision is still based on business case, and who will stand for that business benefit? The business users, yeah, they see the reason why it is there, but to take an action, among the many other business priorities that they have got anyway, uh, the CFO just announced last week that there is a cost-saving program that they have to provide some input to that. And then the marketing director wants a new marketing campaign because the marketing director is tired of only price messages going out to the market. So what, why am I working with this? IT solution, maybe it's a better one, but I have much more urgent responses to give to my business leaders, so yeah, go ahead. Hmm? And then the business case, it goes to, uh, to the business decision forum, primarily based on technology benefits. Now the trouble with that is that if that technology benefits are the main driver for this investment, then this investment might not be really positioned for success, might not be really delivering the thing that it was promising. And it will only come back 
from the delivery at the end time when the delivery is due. Maybe not before. So the problem is just postponed. And then at the end of it, if the guys are strong enough and they really push for action, they might even push the business to make the action on the markets. One example is that IT guys were pushing for the a special campaign that they were driving the business analysis for that and they were making the argumentation that among the other more important campaigns, this one can also go to the campaign management resources. And then at best, if the IT is pushing enough and strong enough and believing enough in the, in the analytics, then they have an idea how to measure back the success and they are driving the success together with the business which makes the environment a little less supporting than the ideal textbook situation. So what have I seen? Okay, another thing. Any chain is only as strong as the weakest ring in the chain. And that's very hard to remember in a large corporate environment where organizational silos are the means of specialization. Everybody in the silo is specializing on one thing and assuming that the rest of the organization is doing good, which is not always the case, which is frustrating many of the players, but that's still the best assumption to work with. And big data solutions are very typical in silo organizations that one part of the organization is dreaming about doing something good, something nice, more advanced. Many times it is technology, dreaming about stepping ahead with the technology enablement. But if you don't have the business coming with you on the same level of maturity, the position for benefits is very weak. So whenever I say something, I will show a kind of uh, very judgment-based uh, ju judgment um, visualization. How did I see the capabilities being different across IT and business on the different steps? Really long chain, too many things to care about, and so many things to balance the, the project scope with. Okay. Um, one of my favorite stories is a big taco, what a surprise. And uh, technology guys were dreaming about moving uh, every data onto the Hadoop environment around network analytics. In, in mobile taco, the network analytics data is uh, most typically the trigger for uh, big data investment because that's the, that's the scale uh, with the network probe data, digger deep into what really happened in the network, which they typically cannot store in the traditional data warehousing. They have pretty big data warehousing anyway, um, but the, the size is when it is really creating the, the idea for, yeah, go for data lake. Uh, we cannot invest uh, network data really into the traditional data warehousing. Um, some of the telcos have all even gone to the, to the way that, okay, all network data go into Hadoop. Now, the challenge with that is that the network data in itself in the telco is actually used on, on many things, not just network. And digging into the deeper dive of the network data, you always have to have the link of the higher level which is also the call, uh, call record detail, CDR. Uh, sometimes it's also considered as financial data and is also considered as customer data. And based on that, they are typically used and stored in normal data warehousing environment. So some of the technology guys which are thinking that, yes, because that belongs more to the network, we migrated, they migrated it to the network. And the funny thing happened is that they realized that 
after that they have migrated that data into the in, with, together with the net rest of the network data they have lost some of the basic functionalities that their business was using on the normal old fashioned data warehouse technologies and what actually happened was that the business users who were not really part of the transformation they were left alone they were not able to catch up with the new skills but they were not able anymore to use properly the old environment and so they were stuck in between uh, one of the european banks has a very similar situation their it guys were also dreaming about moving everything into the hadoop because it's cheaper storage plus more computing power and they also made the migration but they didn't make the decommissioning of the old data warehouse part and actually they found that they are not really able to make decommissioning for the same reason because the business users were not yet able to pick it up in the new environment not without help not without even adding some new people with different skills to the business departments which is not very fast given that this is the most uh, hunted talent on the market so even hiring is not that simple and, uh, and easy the the other story that was interesting is um, very trendy hype uh, customer experience prediction predictive business and um, and the funny thing is that technology guys were really driving that yes have the best of it we have to have a customer experience prediction uh, predicted over uh, graph analytics in spark real time so that we can really make make uh, the, the triggers for the business when there is a significant change and that change let's say a dissatisfaction of one customer can spread to other key people decision makers influencers the company has bought it the company is expecting yes go for it the only trouble is that the business users who have to be the buyers of the solution, who have to use that, that result in their business processes, they are on weekly report basis. And the weekly report doesn't need Spark. The weekly report doesn't need real-time triggering of critical churn events. Just what for? so the gap is on the business side and no matter how much that project is successful on the IT side on time and budget the scope is not there because the business users say that that's not what we wanted I wanted complex KPI oh, but that wasn't planned for the scope yeah but that's what I need so why don't you make me a KPI but it's not the way of giving you a KPI but I don't care, I work with KPIs. So the, the, the project failure is more of an unsatisfied business who doesn't understand what was the requirement, but still unsatisfied. One of my favorite is, um, that's why I call it the shining star, is actually a, a good coincidence. Uh, the environment for this use case was a relatively advanced telco marketing uh, with, with campaign management, not just that the, the process automation is there, but it was a relatively smart. Uh, so the, the campaign types and the campaign decisions were already based on good analytics, not just simple ones, not just selection of, of customer attributes but behavior type of events and they were not made by big data technologies but what a surprise technologies were over already before big data so analytics if it is good is good in any, anyway 
And in this use case, uh, the guys were, who were adding the network data for the telco in big data technologies, they were figuring a very specific customer behavior, which, uh, which seems to be a very consistent consumer behavior. Consumers believed that once upon a time when the 4G uh, handies were coming to the market, the batteries were not that strong. And many of the, of the telco consumers, they have made the setup in their phone that, yeah, I only accept 2G uh, network uh, communication with my phone because I want the phone to be able to, to be with me for the entire day. And what a surprise, that setting remained in the phones. The phones got better, the batteries got better, the, the networks got better, but, th but that setting forgotten remained in the consumer phone. And when it remained, then a 4G capable handy and only communicating with the 2G network, of course it's a negative network experience because it is loading very slow. So the customer is angry that, ah, what a bad network, yeah. Why was it um, an easy case of a good business case? Because first, it is a consistent consumer behavior that was found. Second, that the business already had a relatively good campaign management system, so just adding one more analytics to the, to the existing business environment wasn't bad. It was relatively easy. And third, because the business action was easy. Uh, but whatever, I think it was uh, really a, um, a phone upgrade, which people anyway love it. And just with the phone upgrade, the, the salesperson was getting um, uh, an instruction that, please make sure that you get, when you sell the phone, you talk with the customer that the battery is strong enough so that you, the customer doesn't have to, to limit the communication with the network towers. Everybody was happy, but it was a coincidence of good environment, and within that good environment, a good hypothesis, an easy action, and all the enterprise was happy with it. Uh, so the, 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 the business maturity around each of the steps was relatively balanced, and the find was relatively easy to handle. Now, Large enterprises are very typical for silo organizations, and many times the silo organization is more the reason of the project failure than actually the technology itself. I have not been working with far too many small medium enterprises, but some of the small medium enterprises are a very good example for a different type of failure. Why uh, they are already good in, in uh, the active business action side, they have a very active uh, web page, uh, very real-time respondent, um, and very uh, being able to handle many options. And the, the interesting difference that I have seen, that in those cases where the business ability, the business capability to act on the market is more advanced, there is a larger chance in the technology environment to overestimate the technical capabilities of the Hadoop environment and the open source ecosystem and the operationalization. So what is the computing power? how to do the, the analysis really on time, what, how much and how complex of the business logic is that can we achieve that within, uh, with the computing power within time. So it is a different pattern, and I have not seen far too many cases, but this is an interesting one. Actually, the project has been executed instead of six months, it has been executed in one and a half year, uh, with full production mode, but from very pure uh, business investment term, this was still a project failure. What happened here? The middle 
was overestimated and overpositioned. And even them, who have a very active web page presence, they were not able to drive that out. So why does this, this cheap data storage argumentation come back? Because it's easy. Because it's relatively convincing enough on the level of the, of the procurement and the chief finance officer that yes, I can believe that you guys know what to do with the technology, and I believe you that you will make it a financial success. Management is about promises. IT is about risks. But there has to be somewhere, always somebody, a person standing up and saying that, here I am, I promise, I will deliver. That's what we are. Thank you.